Okay, so I guess we are live now. Let me check. Okay, the lights are going. Okay. Yes, this is going perfect. No se me pone nada nervioso, ni mucho menos. Okay. Vale. Okay. So, vamos a ver. Hola, Jorge. How are you? Let me see if we can turn this around. Hola, Jorge. <laughs> this is okay. This is working fine. Hola, Jorge. Is the sound okay? Can you listen correctly? It's not windy, which is perfect. Perfect. Sunny. Ah, sunny. We have light. Well, we'll have to speed up. Hola, Sergio. <laughs> Hi, Photos Time. How are you doing? Uh -huh. Hi, Susana Perugini. How are you? Bella. Those are friends. Okay, so what time is it right now? Okay. Tw okay. It's, it's, so it's 4 30. So it's time to start. Yeah. Yes. It's okay. Okay, yeah, so <laughs> welcome everybody again to our life, weekly live event. We are today in the village of Fuhue and I'm joined by my friend and colleague, Ello. Hi. Uh, so we're going to be talking, both of us. She says that she doesn't want to talk. Psst, don't believe her. She's going to be talking as well. <laughs> no. Yes, because she knows so much about this little village, but with a lot of history uh, in the middle of Nevada. Okay, check how beautiful it is. Okay, but the important thing is not that. Let me turn the camera around because the important thing is that huge fortification that we're going to go up and see. But before we start going up, let's show you a map. Let me show you a little panoramic of the village. So, as you can see, we are in a hike, okay? Uh, and this is a very strategical place for the Kingdom of Navarre, okay? Uh, we have done here a little cheesy map, okay? So, okay. this is Spain, okay? So, here, what we have, it's all of Spain, and the red part, it's Navarre, where we are right now, okay? The green line, it is El Camino de Santiago. Okay. The thing is that uh, El Camino de Santiago, it is one of the most important pilgrimages, Yeah, I would say, if not to say the most important Christian pilgrimage. And the thing is, that uh, if we go back to the 700s, in the year 711, the Moors, the Muslims, the Muslim Empire, comes from Africa into Spain, hi Patricia, and cross all Spain in less than three years. They conquer all Spain in three years. The thing is that by the 9th century, the Camino de Santiago starts at the beginning, it goes through the coast, okay? But little by little, they realized that wherever the Camino was going, there were no Muslims. So what they decided to do is to move a little bit to the south of Spain, the Camino de Santiago, okay? So by the, let's say 10th, the end of 10th century, uh, Spain is divided in two parts. From the Camino to the south, we have the Muslim empire. From the Camino to the north, we do not, okay? Uh, in fact, up here, uh, we are more Celtic, you have to understand that Ireland, England, Scotland are right here in the map, okay, super close. So we are very influenced by them. And uh, here, what we are, it's in Navarra. And in Navarra, we are in Ujue. Where is exactly Ujue? More or less, something like that. Okay, so okay. it's right in the border. So you have to think that the kingdom of Navarre has always been a Christian kingdom. And we have to defend from the Moors. So all of these were Muslim uh, kingdom, the Muslim empire, okay? Uh, so all along the border between the kingdom of Navarre and all of these other kingdoms, we put these type of villages like Ujue, bastions for Christianity to defend from the Muslim empire, okay? You have to understand that right there, that's Aragon. There, right there, they were Muslim. Here, we were Christian. 
Okay, so we had to be very protective, and that's why we constructed these strong uh, strongholds, very you know, fortifications, I would say. See? See. Si. Besides that, here there's a strategical location because we control three parts, which are? We control almost all our borders, okay? We control the north okay. over there. So those mountains in between the houses, yeah. those are the Pyrenees. Yeah. So who's on, on the other side? side? We have France. France. At that moment, France was the worst people in the world. Remember that? Yeah. Back then, now we get along very well with them. Until okay? the 19th century. Exactly. <laughs> so that is France, the border with France. As we said, that is the border with Aragon. Aragon, the kingdom of Aragon, the ones that they packed with the Muslims, with the Moors. And that is east. And if we go to the south, south part, yes. Okay. We will have Castilla. Castilla. That means that in that time they were Muslims too, and after they become one of the our most important enemies. So we have, from this viewpoint, we find the three kingdoms and we can see if they try to invade us. That's why the village of Hue was so, so, so important, okay? Uh, so this village was constructed, constructed, as you can see, on top of a hill. And I don't know if we could say this is a church. Or a castle. Or a or castle. A, yes or a fortress. Uh, what is this? Oh, this is, a, how do you say in Spanish? No, iglesia. iglesia Fortaleza. So, a fortified, fortified church? Something right? like that. So, it is a fortified church. Uh, the thing is that, why don't we go up? Let's start going up, okay? So, we're gonna try to go all the way up to the church. And the thing is that, imagine, somebody comes to invade us, and we need all the village to come up here so we can defend, okay? That's why we have a church and around the church, all of these huge walls, they were constructed, okay? Lo que no sabemos es si es más importante la iglesia o la fortaleza. Okay, so what I'm saying is that we don't know if what is more important here or what was the intention here? Was it first the church or first the fortification? Yes. So it's one of those strange things that we don't really know, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Okay, so as we go up, uh, let's talk about the economy of this area. Because as you have seen, well, we're gonna go up and you're gonna see that this place or this land, look at that, it's kind of austere landscape. Well, here, wh what we have is on one hand, we have a lot of wheat, okay? We have a lot of almond trees. We also have... Don't forget the wine. Okay, the grapes, yes. huge. Sorry. The, 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 the wine, the wine, super important. Uh, and don't forget shepherds. The shepherds, there we go. Because yeah. coming from the Pyrenees, the shepherds to spend the summer, oh, sorry, the winter, they yeah. would come yeah. all the way to here, okay? So that's a very important thing. Okay, so entering the fortification from the 11th century. So we're saying that this is about from the year 1000, okay? Oh my God, the light is so beautiful today. Wow. Okay, so as we told you, we have the church, the church of Santa Maria de Ujue. Uh, the name of Ujue, it talks about a legend. Okay, let's turn the camera around so we can talk. Oof. It's a little bit too sunny. So, so uh, Santa Maria de Ujue, it's uh, the story says, or the fabula. The, the it's a legend. It's a legend. There we go. The okay, on. I don't know. Here in Navarra, we have all the uh, Holy Mary's images appear to the shepherds. Okay. Shepherds spend more time uh, finding Peter. Holy Mary oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> than keeping, taking care about their uh, ships. Okay? okay. 
is what happened here. It was a shepherd. He was uh, with the uh, with the flock. Sheep. <laughs> yes. The flock. The el... El rebaño. The flock. Rebaño. Vale. Okay. I didn't know that. And uh, he looked that he was a paloma. A pigeon. A pigeon. And flying around a tree. He went there and he found a Holy Mary. Because of that, it is named uh, Usue, is the word in Basque. Okay? Yes. That remember, means sorry, Palo remember that here okay. we speak Spanish and we also speak Basque. Okay? So from the Basque language, Usue means pigeon, Paloma, Paloma which <laughs> okay. is a very common name. Here it's really yes. common. Uh, so we have a lot of girls well, with that name. My goddaughter, yeah. her name is Usue. I love you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so the tradition says that a shepherd found the Holy Mary because of the yeah. pigeon, the Usue, and that's why the village is called Ujue, okay? The pigeons, okay? So that's the story. Really, it was built for defensive uh, reasons, okay? So nothing to do with uh, little birds, things like that, flying. That's but it's a beautiful thing. It's a be beautiful, yes. beautiful, yeah. beautiful thing. And the thing is that we have these more than incredible Gothic entrance to the cathedral. And I doubt it to say Gothic or not, because uh, this church, half of it is Romanesque. Romanesque is from the 11th century, which is uh, the, the turn of the 10th, you know, the year, it was the uh, year 1038 when you started the construction of this church. And this is a little later, this is from the 1400s. But the thing is that it's super well preserved and has so much history into it, okay? So in the keystone, we have two, two parts. Let's say the beginning and the end of the life of Jesus Christ. Let's begin with the beginning. Up there, we have the epiphany, which is the uh, representation or the visit of the three wise men, the kings, okay? Uh, on your left, you have Melchior, Balthazar, and Gaspar, the three kings, giving the presents to baby Jesus, that is stepping on the mother, on the Holy Mary. He's very playful, he's very happy, okay? Look at the mother, she's also very smiley, which is a very strange thing. Normally they're very erratic and very strong representations of the Holy Mary, but she's, she has a little smile, sweet little smile. On the other hand, right there, that we really don't know who is that. Some people say that it could be uh, Charles II of Navarre, the one who constructed this, but he's not wearing a crown, so we doubt that. So there's another belief that he could have been a bishop from uh, Calahorra, a village very close to here, and his name was Robert Lecoq. Lecoq. Robert yes. uh, Coq, Lecoq in French is the rooster. Um. There we go. Hello. You, we have it. You have a rooster here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no head, but trust me, no that's... Tiene nope. No tiene There's no, roost, no head in the rooster, but it was a rooster. So that's what tells us that maybe that is uh, Robert uh, Lecoq, okay? He was a very influential uh, priest in the court of Charles II of Navarre, okay? So we're talking 1300s. So that's the beginning of Jesus Christ's life, and right underneath we have the end, we have the last supper. Uh, one of those questions, how many people was invited to the last supper? Twelve. Um, and Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ, uh, Jesus Christ was paying for <laughs> <laughs> like 13, okay? Uh, if we count, we might seem that there are not 13, but there are, okay? So in the I middle- I love that part. <laughs> what? <laughs> because you know. <laughs> that guy down there, outside of the table, who is that? Okay, by the way, he's stealing food from Jesus Christ. This is the most plate. funny thing. What is he doing? He's stealing the food yeah. from Jesus Christ's plate. So who's that guy? The bad guy, <laughs> Judas, okay? How do you represent Judas? Well, stealing food from our Lord's plate. And on Jesus Christ's lap, you can see one uh, apostle, very young. Normally, that is a representation of St. John. Okay, John, which is the, it was the beloved disciple. So that on the keystone, the center. And if you see also, okay, let's take
take advantage of the light right now. All of these beautiful capitals, okay, they are super, super well worked. And well, we have a lot of musicians. Let me see if I can make a zoom. Look at those uh, musicians. No. <laughs> we have Eve. We have Adam. Okay. We have, okay, that one, which is the one that Ella likes, the one with the yeah. dragon. Okay, the lady killing the dragon. Yes, okay. it's a lady killing a dragon. Yes, because of tympanum. <laughs> Thank you, Susanna. Susan. Okay, that's how you say it in English. Okay, and on the other side, no, that's good light. Oh, sorry, wow. that was too fast. Okay, let me go a little slower with the zoom. We told, we said that uh, one of the big economies on this part, it is the grapes. So these capitals, as you can see, they're dedicated to the harvest, okay? So these three capitals are all about the harvest. You see the little grapes, you see the grape leaves, all of these people collecting uh, the grapes to make the wine. And if we keep on going, we have the birth of Jesus Christ. First, we have this beautiful Annunciation, okay? Holy Mary is welcomed by Gabriel, telling her, hey girl, you are pregnant. And she's like, <laughs> then she goes to visit her cousin and says, hey, I'm so happy, I'm pregnant. And then I love this image because here we have our Lady Mary laying in the bed, the cousin holding baby Jesus and Joseph. Okay, normally many times we turn to forget St. Joseph, it's like, where is he? Well, there he is with a wife, with a son, a beautiful image. And then it is a little bit not very well preserved, this part, but we have, uh, hi, Tricia. <laughs> uh, we have baby Jesus in the cradle and the donkey and the cow, which is super beautiful. Okay? Yeah. I love this door. Let me zoom out so you see how impressive I mean, how much details are in this huge, okay? So you see the perspective in such a big, big, big uh, door, okay? And if we go into the details, we get to see beautiful, beautiful things. But let's go inside, yes. okay? So let's come in this beautiful church of Ujue. Okay, first. Okay, so there be light. Okay, thank you, Ella. So uh, this church, it is an architectural weird thing because what do you see right now? It's Romanesque, okay? It's 11th century. And it is, you know, the perfect rounded arches and it's super symmetrical, okay? It's uh, very strong, very powerful. Let's get closer because the most important thing that we have here, it is, uh, hola, Elizabeth Jimenez. <laughs> okay, 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 please let me know as we are inside of all of these huge temples, if we do have good connection or we have to run away, okay? So I hope we have good connection here. So I was telling you that the most important thing or image that we have here, it's her, Santa Maria de Ujue. She's from the 12th century. So she's about 1,000, okay, let me put that, the light, okay. So this, uh, Holy Mary, I, people from everywhere around Navarra loves her, okay? She's, as, let's see, she's all covered with silver. I don't know if you can appreciate that her gown, it's more like a medieval army shield. She's a warrior, okay?
okay? She's not one of those beautiful Holy Marys, very religious. Okay? She's very religious, but she's also a very powerful uh, Holy Mary. We are in a village where there is a lot of wars, so she has to defend, okay? So that's one of the th important things. Another thing that we find here, okay, I need the lighter, okay, the little zone, because here. I need my glasses. Agree. Okay. So we have that little cage. Let's see if we can put, okay, right there. That little cage in there, what we have is the mummified, uh, okay, Suzanne, you are asking if, the, if we are in the Camino. Yes and no, and we'll let you know in five minutes the answer to that one. Okay, so what is in there? Uh, what is in that little box? It is the heart yeah. of King Charles II of Navarre. The bad one, there we go. Well, people call him El Malo, the bad one, but he was not that bad. No. I mean, he, was just, he just killed some noble people. I was like... He was, uh, he was known as the bad, as El Malo, because he always war, was fighting against Pedro El Bueno, the good one. Because of that, he has this name, but he wasn't so bad. Obviously, it depends on who tells you the story. Yeah, of course. We are from Navarre, so it is. he's, he's known so as the bad, bad one, but he's not that bad. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so we have the, in there the mummified remains of his heart. But only his heart. Only his heart. Okay, and we cannot see the it. Body? The rest of the body is? In Pamplona's cathedrals. But not all the body. We have another extra thing. Uh, because, mejor en español. Okay, you say in Spanish <laughs> and I translate it. That este rey era francés. Y la tradición francesa decía que todo rey tenía que ser enterrado en la catedral, en la capital de su reino. Por eso... Él tenía que estar enterrado en, la, en, en Pamplona, pero su corazón pertenecía a Nuestra Señora del Juez. So, uh, this king, you have to think that the kingdom of Navarre back then, it was part in what today is Spain and part in what today is France. Okay, let me turn this around so we can talk it this way. Sorry, let me put the mask on. Uh, so, this king, like many of the kings of Navarre, he was born on the French side. So the thing is that in the French tradition, it says that the king has to be buried in the cathedral of the kingdom, which is in Pamplona. So uh, he, Carlos II, Charles II of Navarre, he was buried inside of the cathedral of Pamplona. But before he died, he said that, okay, the king has to be buried where the king has to be buried. But, but my heart but belongs at heart. heart. But my heart belongs to Usue. So, but my heart belongs to her. Okay. So what he did is he said, he asked in his uh, will, please do take my heart out, mummify it, and take it to Uhue. Okay. But uh, he loved to. We have another important place in Navarra, another uh, church, which is one of the most important one in Navarra, is Roncesvalles, where we have uh, the Holy Mary, and he wanted to have his, I Gu don't know how his to say guts, that. His guts, his stomach and liver and <laughs> everything. All <laughs> the disgusting know. things. So his heart is here. His guts are in Roncesvalles, and his body is buried in Pamplona. Okay. Here there's one little thing that a lot of people don't know. Yes, please, get some light. Uh, the, th the thing is that they were not uh, Christian doctors. They were not allowed to separate parts of the body. So when the king asked for that, uh, he wrote in his will that he wanted part of his body being removed from himself. So he appointed, he assigned this job to a Jewish doctor that was at that time in Pamplona. Right? So, as Christian doctors could not do it, Jewish ones could do it. Okay, so the Jewish doctor, once he was dead, uh, okay, thank you, Jorge. We don't say guts, that's kind of disgusting. We say organs. Thank okay. you. So his organs are in <laughs> 
So, uh, that would Charles the, the second of Navarre. What else? Uh, about this church, I told you that this, what you see now, is Romanesque, okay? 12th century, but half of the church, it's Gothic. Let me turn this around. Look at the difference in the arches. These are pointed arches, and it's completely more modern, okay? This is from the 13, 1400s. The thing is that here we had the Romanesque church, and Charles II, he wanted to make it a much more impressive, uh, modern, Gothic-looking church, sorry, not cathedral. And he started the construction on the back, demolishing a little bit of the Romanesque, until he was going to come all the way to here and make a Gothic altar. The thing is that due to the pest, uh, bubonic pest of the uh, 1300s, and he was in too many wars, he didn't have any more money, and he had to stop the construction. Uh, one of the things I love of this church, let me see if I can show you can it to try you. With the light. Let's, please, do that. Okay, there we go. You see that? That's the beginning of the Gothic arches that should have gone higher, all the way there, to make the huge altar, okay? So, unfortunately, he ran out of money, and he had to finish very quickly the end of this church. Technically speaking, really, it's a pleasure to have these two super strong styles uh, in here, okay? So, let me show you. Let's go to the Baptist <laughs> pile, which is I an incredible yes. <laughs> delight. All right, so remember that we are in a fortification. Okay, and we don't know what is or what was first, the church or the fortification. The thing is that underneath, okay, let's turn this around again. Okay, underneath where we are, what we had, it was uh, like a huge pool that would collect all the water from the rain. And was under, yes, church. underneath, yes, was okay, so under where we are now, underneath where we are there was, and there is, a huge cave, or a nave, where all the water was collected. Uh, so, the thing is that, imagine that all the village would gather in here, and they could be living in here for two, three, four weeks, two months. Or more. Or more. Yeah. And you could not throw away water. So, look about, we're talking to you, okay, this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, water pile, you know, to baptize. But what is that? Hello. I love that part. Yes. So they were here, but they need to baptize the children that they have, and because of that, they baptize them here, but they keep the water. Because of that, we have this boat, and they return the water. Into the, into the big pool that yeah, was underneath. Yeah. <laughs> so there was... Spanish is like Algeid. Algeid, uh, yeah. I don't know if there's a word for that in English. So there was n no water that could be wasted, not even the water from baptizing. Yes. So it was, okay, we baptize you, but we'll save so we'll the extra water. We need the water. water for another thing, yes. Yeah, it's so cool. We need to save every drop, yes. Okay, so I love, 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 love this church. Okay. Santa Maria de Ujue. So we're going to go outside. We'll check the pulpit from the 18th century, 1700s. It's mega, super baroque. Okay, so let's Hi. come out. Water tank, Aljibe. Okay, Aljibe. thank you, Jorge. <laughs> yes. Okay, so the thing is that <laughs> the light is not going to help us a lot. Yes, of course. So, here we have this, but we have the entrance to the church, and there is a, around the, the church is the fortification. So we're going to walk a little bit, 
around the fortification. And in the first step, what we're going to find are the four apostles, okay, the four writers of the Bible. Here, as you can see, we have the representation of the angel. So that is Matthew. Here we have Mark, because we have the lion. Yeah. On the other side, we have the bull, which is Luke. That is Luke. And the fourth one is John with the eagle. And one of the things that a lot of people ask yeah. us is, what on earth is he doing? I mean, because that's like a knife. Well, it's not like a knife. It is a knife. You have to understand that back then, uh, on the 13, 1400s, there was no paper. They would write on a on a skin, okay, on the skin of a cow or skin the stomach of a cow, okay, or a pork. And if you make a mistake, you did not have an eraser or a delete button. Yes, this is Typex. <laughs> this is the Typex. Yes. <laughs> that was the Typex of that time period. Okay. Uh, they would scrap a little bit. It's pretty cool. And those little things in there, those were the uh, ink holders, okay, to keep all the ink. And so I think it's super cool. Somebody? <laughs> okay, so check the beautiful view. Okay. Boy, can we kill? I almost tripped. And the thing is that, look at this beautiful balcony. This beautiful balcony, what we get to see, it's, oh, well, besides right now, all the <laughs> sparrows, okay. It's five o'clock. <laughs> so I was telling you that look at the beautiful view that we have in here, okay? And all of the <laughs> pages flying around. As I, I think they're gonna hurt us. So I think. But I think that from here we get to see the village of Olite right there, okay? Uh, hi, Yana. Greetings from Greece. The Herald on the Wall. Wow. Thank you, Suzanne. I love when people give them gives us a hand. So anyway, uh, this was like the guardian part, okay, to control all of the kingdom. One of the things that I think is amazing is that the ceiling that we have up here, it's original, okay? Let me show you, because you see how beautifully everything is carved and preserved. Okay, <laughs> I don't know. I think we're gonna be attacked. You know the movie The Birds of, yeah. of Alfred Hitchcock. I think it's gonna be something like that. It's like way, old, way too so many. Golondrina. Let's see, no, they're sparrow. Golondrina. Sí. Golondrina. Okay. Enara. So, Enara. Look how beautiful. How do you say in Esquera Golondrina? Enara. 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 Okay. Well, she's fluent in Basque. <laughs> I am not, as you can see. So we have seen half of the fortification. Let us take you to the other side, and here. Suzanne, you're going to see that we are in the Camino de Santiago. It's not in the official Camino de Santiago. It was part of the ancient Camino de Santiago. Okay? Here, bear with me if the... Uh, let me turn around. Yeah. Because here, maybe uh, we do not have good Wi-Fi and the lights. You can see it's not super good. Okay? But this is not the main Camino de Santiago. Okay? But it, is part, it was part of the Camino de Santiago. Okay? Why am I saying this? Okay, this is the back of the church. Okay, those three apses that we saw in there. Here we have them. One, two, and three. And you see all of this decoration. Okay, más abajo. A la, a la barra. Okay. También all of arriba. that. Es lo mismo. Eh, all of that is those little checks. That is a mark of the Camino. There were pilgrims coming from this was a secondary road of the Camino de Santiago. Okay, let's, let's okay, see thank them you, all. Ella. Okay. okay. So, the Camino, vete un poquito más lejos. Okay, there we go, perfect. 
So the Camino de Santiago, it's the green line, but there were other ways to come to Camino. So that's one of the places from there to the west, going there. That's the Camino de Santiago. Maculation, okay. Okay, girl. So, so, what is that? <laughs> you know very technical words. Anyway, from here, uh, what we can say is that this is a super a strong structure, okay? On the left, we have the church, and on the right, we have the fortification. The church was protected by this huge, super thick wall, okay? Look at those windows, how thick they are, okay? They're like super big. And uh, that way, all the village could live in here. You see those little bumps that we have there? From there, we can see that two floors they were constructed there. They would set a second floor where we are right now, here. Civilians would live, okay? And the militars would live up there. And all the ones who can help and in the war, of yes, course. Of course. Right? I mean, not just the militars, the people who could help, okay? If you're a young man, you, you can be sitting there watching and protecting absolutely everything, okay? So let's go down, yeah. okay? So we are going to go down the village so we get a better perspective of all of these village of Ujue. Okay. Again, sorry for the light because now it's like heating directly to us. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry. Okay. Okay, so let's come down because I think this is one of the most beautiful views of Ujue, at least I think so. Because from here, yeah, we can see the Pyrenees. We oh, told yeah. you that we have those three crowns, so those three people who could invade us here. All of those, all the way at the back, those are the Pyrenees. Okay, so right behind there, you had France. I know you see a little bit of the snow tips out there. Yes. Yep. Right. That it's Aragon, okay, and right there you have Castile. Okay, so those are the three big kingdoms that we had in here. Okay. Okay. Whoops. What happened here? No. Okay. No, no. So let's go down. So you see how beautiful this uh, village is. Let me take this thing yeah. out. I really, uh, the village of Fujue has a lot of history, a lot of history with the shepherds, a lot of history with uh, many things. Yeah. Okay. Did you know that my grandfather came here you for working as a shepherd? No when, way! Yeah, when he was young, uh, he needed to take... Okay, let's start okay. from the beginning. Uh, she is from the Pyrenees, from a beautiful village. I'm trying to convince her. The most beautiful village the most in the beautiful. world. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, Knowing that. Uh, do I see a grey moustache trying to grow? All right, thank you. <laughs> okay, I'll let, you, I'll let you know about my moustache later. <laughs> okay, I should have been worried my moustache. I wouldn't show my moustache, ugly moustache. So, okay, so Elo is from a village called uh, Ochagavia. It's probably one of the most beautiful villages in Navarre. It's, it's in the Pyrenees. It's one of the villages in the in world. The, in the world. I think it's that uh, she, her family, you used to have a sheep. Yes. Okay. My and you say that. Father, and he used to come when he was young to here to the village for spending the winter. And after, during the spring and summer, he went to the, to the village, to the mountains, to the Pyrenees. But during that time, he spent here like five, six months in, in Ujue. And you know, the shepherds, when they came here and he spent so much time, they didn't have a lot of things for it, you know? Uh -huh. And usually they, uh, they used to, yeah, they, they brought, bring, brought. Uh, some cheese and meat and these kind of things. But at the end, they didn't have anything to eat. Like they used to prepare uh, I don't know in English. 
perhaps uh, the name of this meal is ah. las migas. Migas. It's called breadcrumbs. <laughs> breadcrumbs. Okay. Okay. So it's uh, it was called breadcrumbs. Uh, it's a typical, typical. It's really typical dish from here. And now what we're heading is to this place, to this shop, uh, where they have an oven. It's a baker. It's a bread maker. They do cookies and pastries, and they are super well known in Navarre because of their breadcrumbs. Okay. So we're gonna. Yeah. And my grandfather learned here how to prepare them. And I eat uh, a lot of days at home. Now, the one who prepared this meal is my father. Oh. Yes. Okay, yes. okay. So we're gonna going to try. I'm not going to invite you. Oh, darn. <laughs> okay, I want to try those breadcrumbs. Anyway, so <laughs> what about the mustache? You can try. Okay, so what yeah. about the mustache? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, she couldn't. She cannot. You, you look like your grandfather. I look like my <laughs> grandfather. I mean, I swear to God, I shaved this morning. Uh, I, I was like, oh my God, I look like my grandpa. Yes. So terrible. <laughs> like, oh my God. I just white. So I was like, oh, I really. Right. Anyway, what is this? So the thing is that uh, this is a movement that started in the year 2003 in Australia uh, when a group of friends decided to leave or grow a mustache in the month of November because one of his friends uh, got prostate cancer. And in a serious way, uh, since 2004, uh, November is known as Movember. This is a little short thing of mustache and November. And it is to bring awareness of uh, prostate cancer, okay? Which is one of the things that men, we fear <laughs> big time and when you leave your mustache, you want to bring awareness to all the men, especially with an age. Uh, I'm <laughs> almost shaking because, <laughs> oh, don't laugh, girl. <laughs> it Sorry. is that in Sorry. Spain, by law, uh, our social security uh, starts doing prostate checks when you turn 50. Okay. And next year, in February, I'm turning 50. <laughs> And I'm going to have my very first prostate <laughs> check. Uh, oh boy, am I scared to death <laughs> of this issue. But, but hey. Okay, but this is a start being so common. Because I have friends who are... Que se están dejando because yes. in November. Yes, in November, it's, it's called the, the movement, as uh, William Sam, many of you are saying. Uh, it's... Uh, you call me viejo, you call me old guy. It's called, well, this movement is Yo called no Movember, <laughs> Movember Men. So I always leave in November, two, three days, uh, the little mustache. My wife hates it, my kids cannot stop laughing. And every year, I don't know why, it comes out differently. I mean, one year is like a little 1920s, and this one is like, <laughs> it's my grandfather. I, was like, I, can't, I can't believe I'm my grandfather. You stop sorry, laughing, girl. <laughs> I feel ridiculous, suerte but hey, que, come on. Suerte, suerte que llevo la mascarilla. Yeah, no, sí, that's sí, a good sí, thing sí. about this year. With yeah. the mask, nobody can see except <laughs> you guys. But anyway, now, in a serious way, if you know any man that is around 50 and if they have not done the prostate check, please tell them to check their prostates. It's not fun, uh, but it's better to find out the earlier. So it is super important. Uh, es que además es curioso porque Siempre hay como mucha más conciencia en el caso de las yes. mujeres con todo el cáncer de mama, pero en los hombres uh, es como no es tan no sé, I think that, queda yes, como well, un poco Ella is saying that Perdón, uh, the breast uh, cancer for women it's you know it's something that is super common to talk yeah. and you girls take you know you do the testing on yourselves and there's yeah. a little limp or anything and we have checks uh, almost every year when we go to the doctors yeah. and Here we in Spain, start in the 40 45 years, something yeah. like that, but it's quite common. Mm -hmm. So, and we talk about it, but it is that you, you don't girls talk about no, <laughs> girls talk about it, and that's why the Movember movement started because, like in breast cancer, any type of cancer, I mean, uh, the earlier we find out, has more cure. So, you know, uh, I will not show you my future <laughs> prostate <laughs> check. 
<laughs> but it's something that we all should get done. Yes? So that's Jorge what I'm wearing. Charla? Don't feel ridiculous. It's a beautiful thing to do as a tribute. <laughs> yes, it is. We have to give tribute to the ladies who have, uh, you know, the breast cancer uh, survivors, fighters, and the prostate cancer fighters, survivors, and the whole thing. So here goes my November uh, mustache. Okay, so that's why I'm wearing a mustache. No te mal, eh? no Doesn't te look too tan bad. Mal. No, no. No tan mal. Okay, okay, so we made it. We are here. Okay, let me turn this around. We are in this baker place. Oh, I yeah. tripped, sorry. Okay, before we go, uh, okay. Yes, let's go in. Okay. Pasa, pasa, tranquila. Go ahead. Okay, let me put my mask back on. Yes. There's people around, oh, so... Wow. Okay, so uh, by law, we cannot be too many people inside of a shop. So we cannot go inside right now because this... And they're a little bit elderly, so they're in the risk group. So might as well come and take advantage of this amazing light over the village of Ujue. Look how beautiful Ujue is. I love this little village. Okay. Okay. So, why are we here? In Pastas Urrutia. One of those <laughs> uh, difficult last names to be said. Okay. No, it's so easy. Yeah. That means tell an American to say Urrutia. That means far. Okay. Only far. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let us introduce you to Juana. Hola. Hola Juana. Uh, she is the owner. She is. Oh my God! You cannot imagine how good this smells right now. This is heaven. Okay, so, eh, hola Juana, hola. ¿qué tal estás? Muy bien. So, está por aquí, vosotros hacéis pan. Sí. Pan, hace tu marido, es el panadero. Sí. Uh, so here, what they do is they make bread and they have a lot of uh, pastries and many things done. Okay, there we go. Let me show you the bread that they do here. It's a traditional type of bread. It's not like a baguette or anything like that. So. Those breads are the traditional breads from here. And people from all over Navarre come here to eat migas, which is uh, those breadcrumbs that we told you about. Okay? But also, they make a lot of things because we told you that they had almonds. Let me. Puedo cogerte un par de almendras para enseñarles? Ah, vale. Ah, no, pero o sea, okay. So, these are the almonds. Like Okay, so here there are a lot of almond trees everywhere around, and there's a lot of honey. Okay, so now in these moments of the year, what they do is this incredibly amazing candy. Is this is Christmas candy? Oh, let's go into the light. Da, 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 da. Okay, and this is just azúcar, sugar, honey, and almonds. That's all it is into this, okay? It's uh, not easy to do because you can burn the caramel and it's like not good at all. It is really muy costoso de hacer. Well, uh, the thing is that, especially here. Pasamos, okay. Ooh, we come in the kitchen. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. Okay, I've never been here. Yeah, we have bread crumbs. Okay. Uh, qué bueno. Oh, vale. ¿Qué tienen las migas? Las migas tienen eh, ajo, so. jamón, panceta, champiñón. Para, 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 para. <laughs> so it's garlic. It has panceta, which is uh, like bacon. Yeah. It has mushrooms, eh, bread, of course, jamón, ham, Spanish ham. Y al final es el pan, 
So it's the bread that you have seen, but it's the bread from the day before. It has to be dried. Okay, I said one day, but it has to be dried for four days. So you have to make it uh, in little, you know, little slashes, little thingies. Vale. ¿Quieres ir a decirles que esperen un segundillín? Vale. So, uh, she's, uh, Juana is saying that it's... Uh, <laughs> let's just say, una dice, aquí está mi plato, here's my plate. Uh, you cannot imagine how good it smells. Okay, so this has to do a lot of do with the shepherds. Okay? It's a huge, huge, huge thing with the shepherd world. Okay? Vale, entonces... Uh, we're gonna chase them. Sí, todo eso. Un poquito. Oh, okay. So. Esto no, esto no lo solemos poner nosotros en casa. Okay. Vamos a comer migas. We're gonna eat the breadcrumbs, but here the tradition is to eat them with grapes, especially now, which is the moment of the harvesting, and it's uh, we're finishing the harvest. So Juana is bringing us. Some amazing grapes. Wow. So people from everywhere around the world, people from Australia, New Zealand, the United States, uh, all around South America, they have come all the way to Hue all around Europe to try her breadcrumbs. So her husband is the one who makes the bread, and she's the one that makes the breadcrumbs. That's like super good. Mm, I can't wait to taste them. Vale. Y de Pamplona. Y de yes. And, and, well, you have to think that we are less than an hour from Pamplona. And uh, for a lot of us, for lo us locals, we come here, especially to this place, because uh, they're super good, they're super natural, and you know that we know that the how do you say all the all the goods that they put in here. Okay, listen to this. Can you hear that? Okay, so when you listen to this, you can do it. So, Trish is, say, is asking us, una chica nos pregunta, a ver si nos puedes dar la receta y luego la pongo yo. Pues sí. Okay, so Trish is asking us if we can... You need to practice a lot for learning how to prepare, because it's not only a bread or it's the way you prepare them, water, Okay, so not easy. What we're going to do, we're going to write the recipe I'll, I'll maybe I'll write a post about it and I can put the whole recipe and maybe we could one day take a video and show how to make breadcrumbs next I'm looking at you yes, girl yes yes next uh, I have no pressure weekend, here. my dad for person I will take a video okay you make a video yes. of your father doing the yes. breadcrumbs yes I promise and promise I she promised so I make, I make a video how I eat them <laughs> <laughs> okay so Promise by next week. Uh, no, 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 no. Next week is not going to be easy. Okay, in two, two weeks, weeks. <laughs> I will post a video with the. Uh, Aita, que voy. Aita is that that I'm going. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'm so happy. Okay, so. You know. You eat this. Okay. With a spoon. Ok. Juana, mil gracias. Ok, so. Let's go. Yo, yo puedo coger, yo puedo okay. coger. You go, espera, hold it. You go first. No, no, you, tira, tira. So you eat them at the same time? 
Están de muerte. <laughs> okay, so I tape, you, you eat. Guess what? Okay, she's offering us a little glass of wine. I guess we have to. We don't have to drive. Her husband, Ella's husband, has just come in. So, uh, now it's your turn to hold the video camera, okay? <laughs> now I'm eating. Okay, it's not that easy. My Yeah. Too hot? No. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Coge una uva. Ahí tenéis. Gracias, Juana. Vamos, esto es un lujo. So, when you try it, you can feel a little bit of the garlic. The pancetta, the, the bacon, it's a seal there. And one of the things of the breadcrumbs is that they're soft, but they have been also a little bit crispy. So the texture is crispy and soft at the same time. And eating them really it's fresh. really fresh. You Make change fresh. everything because it's really fresh. Then because you mix. The, the breadcrumbs are a heavy meal. It's not something that I like a little thing. It's a heavy meal. <laughs> Jorge dice que qué poético. 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 Salud, hello. Trees, feast are totally. Yes, we will. The grass. Uh, salty, sweet is the best combo. It is. I mean, it's. You can talk. I'm not going to talk more, okay? I'm going to eat them, okay? You can talk. I can talk, I can talk. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Uh, don't touch mine because I'm going to show them all the pastries and the cookies that they do here. Okay. Okay. So, espera, no, que les voy a enseñar la tienda. Que la tienda es como súper chula. Si se dime, hey, I'm coming, I'm coming. Uh, selfie of you toasting. Okay, I will, I will. I will finish up the, the video with a toast. So, uh, one of the great things that they have here is that they have all of these homemade pastries. The other day, when we came here to research if there was Wi Fi or anything, we tried these ones. They are. Cookies made with pachanan. Pachanan is the local liquor that we drink here. It's like uh, pastis, but has some grapes into it. So it's... No, some grapes? No, it's... Uh, how do you say endrinas? <laughs> it's 8.30 here in the morning. I have to wait for the wine. Hey, it's 5.30 or 5 o'clock in the morning somewhere in the world. <laughs> Susan, you can drink it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> So, uh, all of the pastries are super, super good, okay? And all of the most important things that people from everywhere around Navarre comes over here are these tejas. The tejas are these things, okay? These ones cannot be shipped because they break, but those ones can be shipped because they don't break, well, or they break, break little. The uh, teja is a gable, and it's traditional from here, okay? So I was telling you about the caramelized uh, turron. This is a Christmas thing. It's only this time of the year, which is honey. Uh, tiene miel, almendras y azúcar. Honey, sugar, and almonds. The almonds I show you. But one of the specialities uh, from here are these, which are the caramelized almonds, OK? And this is just sugar and, how do you say, and almonds, okay? Nougat. Okay, the turron is called nougat. Okay, thank you. I love you guys. Thank you so much for your help. So this is... Okay, so let me get into the light. So this 
almonds here. It's just almond and sugar, caramelized sugar. Uh, she says that this is the jewel and probably the most, the best caramelized almonds in the world. I must say that they are. Well, I don't know if you can hear. I don't know. It's terrible that you can only see it. You cannot taste it, but they're so, 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 so good. Mandáis? Podéis mandar a Estados Unidos o algún... Okay. So, they do have an online shop. And I'll write down. So, they do have an online shop, and they can ship everywhere around the world. And they can ship anything except uh, wine. Uh, the breadcrumbs, unfortunately, cannot be shipped. But all the cookies and almonds and all those, they can ship. So, I will post your, their, their, their website. Uh, you can get in touch with her and she can ship you whatever you may need out of this place. Okay, so. Yo me voy a salir fuera a despedirme. Yo Juana. voy a ir dentro a comerme las migas que han sobrado. Okay, so. I gotta go outside uh, <laughs> to say goodbye. <laughs> but she's gonna go inside. Don't touch my breadcrumbs because I'm coming yes. right in. Hey, hello, and thank you wine. very much <laughs> for bye joining bye. me today. <laughs> Hey, a eso voy porque está precioso. Juana, muchísimas, muchísimas gracias. It's been an amazing pleasure talking with you today, like always is. Eh, muchísimas gracias por todo. Bye. Vengo ya. Yeah, I'm coming back in one minute. Don't touch my breadcrumbs, okay? No prometo nada. Okay. So, I'll be right back. Because I, right now, the light. Oh, by the way, if you're a biker, this is one of the places to come biking. Hola. Hey. Bikers, bikers, bikers from Castejón. From Castejón. Yeah. So the bikers really love really? this route because it's a little windy, there's barely no traffic. Apenas hay tráfico, ¿no? Y hay mucha curva. Okay. So, my friends, thank you so much. I hope you have let me put Ujue on my back. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this little visit of Ujue. It's been a great pleasure. If you have liked this video and would like to support any more videos, I have posted a tip yard. Tips are welcome and super appreciated. I will see you next week. I promise that I'm gonna... Elo is gonna take his father, her father doing a migas, the breadcrumbs. So hopefully in about two weeks, we'll have that video going. And I'll see you in the next video. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great, great, great day. Bye-bye.